Welcome to the RF Elements Unlicensed Podcast. I am Caleb Nauer, and this is Tassos Galifianakis. What's going on, Tassos? <laughs> What's happening, Caleb? Hi, everybody. I'm Tassos. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing this until you get visibly angry. Well, which I mean, honestly, honestly, I'm curious. I'm curious though. I mean, Galifianakis sounds Greek. Is he Greek? I have no idea. I mean, it sounds like it could be, uh, you know, Bonopolis, you know, Galifianakis, and all this other stuff. So maybe he's Greek. Who knows? That that'd be interesting. Maybe maybe one of our listeners can look it up and, and let us know if if, I, if I'm right or not. I don't know. I know he lives on a farm in North Carolina, which is close enough to being topical for me. So, <laughs> okay. what's going what's going on this week, man? What's happening? Ah, you know, uh, actually been pretty busy this week. A lot of planning going on right now. You know, Wispa Palooza is right around the corner, you know, so I'm getting excited for Vegas. Hotels booked, airline tickets booked. Uh, we're getting our cool booth uh, set up and uh, all the fun things that we're going to do uh, once in Vegas. So, yeah, Wispa Palooza is definitely taking up uh, the majority of, of my week uh, with work related stuff. Yeah, it's an affair for sure. Now, we'll be on the back wall, so when you guys get in, just go ahead and stream on past all those other folks. We're on that back wall. We'll be real hard to miss. You'll you'll know we're there, I promise you. Yeah, so. you'll, you'll definitely know. You'll definitely know. Like I said, yeah, you can miss all those other vendors and just come straight back to the RF Elements booth for sure. <laughs> So, well, cool, cool. Yeah, I've just been busy here doing normal day to day stuff. Um, just trying to live my life, man. So, uh, gotta admit, I am a little bit agitated. Uh, not work related at all. Just why uh, are you agitated? Just, I mean, I'm that's my normal sort of state in half the time, anyways, as anyone who knows me will <laughs> testify to. But, yeah. dude, I go to the grocery store late last night. I'm like, all right, I gotta get my weekend vittles squared away. So, and I like to do it by myself. So, I don't have somebody going, we don't need all this. So, <laughs> I know that goes. I definitely, I like, it's, it's definitely a different shopping experience with yourself, you know, or or with other people. <laughs> yeah. So if I have to make three loops around the store by myself, no problem. If I have to do it in tow, I'm just in like pure rage mode. So totally, totally just bogus. But anyways, no. So I fill up my basket uh, with my meats and all this stuff. I'm gonna do some experimenting this weekend on some things. Got my beverages all loaded up. Roll into the cart, and I'm already agitated one because there's just like nothing there. The meat is hard to find. Everything is way expensive and like random stuff. I couldn't hardly find any mustard. Like there's just so many shortages and all these shenanigans going on with all this pandemic nonsense and the after effects. Then a checkout. Well, first of all, I get agitated checking out because the little girl's like, oh, oh, you having a party this weekend? And I'm looking back at the beverages and meat. And I'm like, party yeah. of one. Party yeah, of I'm one. like, yeah, having a bunch of folks come over this weekend. Totally not sad and miserable at all. So it's all good. <laughs> then yeah, I 12, 12 pound brisket's not for me you know? nah nah it's like 8 people coming over so then I see the amount and I was like stutter and I'm like ar, ar. I'm like why and then you know I was studying it more because I've always been that sort of asshole that just buys whatever you know I don't really care because you know it's what I do for the meat and everything and then I start looking at the prices I'm like hmm yeah all this stuff's like twice what it used to cost so there's just yeah it's, it's agitating, but we'll persevere. Hopefully something's looking a little better around the corner and we get through all this doom and gloom that, that we're seeing with all this nonsense. But <laughs> The doom. Doom. Actually, that leads into our segue, segue, segue. So anyone on the popular Wisp sort of channels, Wisp talk and stuff like that, uh, you've probably noticed there's a lot of doom talk going on. Not, and then that's your normal day-to-day -day catastrophe that we're dealing with. with equipment shortages, storm season, I mean, hurricanes, you know, these are all super serious things. But, you know, we're, we're used to this sort of thing. But it just seems like there's just so much doom, doom uh, in the industry with the Wisp going, y'all, Wisp, we're done, we're going to die, and... The, the whole conversation is just kind of bananas, you know, whether it be 5G or Starlink, Starlink Definitely. being the big, the Definitely. big doom and gloom. Or... Don't get me started on the 5G thing. Ugh. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally going to get you started on the 5G thing here <laughs> in a sec. <laughs> <laughs> I just like making you mad on a Friday, but, yeah, thanks. uh, or, or it's, you know, fiber, whether it be people putting in their own fiber or, you know, the government's putting all this fiber in the ground and it's going to kill everybody's industry or business. Like, Y'all yeah. calm down. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I've definitely definitely seen lately, not just this week specifically, but yeah, you could definitely see it building up and uh, there's been a lot of chatter and talk back and forth. 
uh, you know, those people in multiple camps as far as, yeah, we're, we're definitely in for it and we're done. And then there's the people like us, right. Uh, that feel like we're just getting started, you know? So, uh, I'm, I'm definitely not in the doom and gloom camp at all. I'm not really worried about it much at all. I mean, you know, in the last, what, 15, 20 years we've been doing this. I mean, we had, let's see, it was YMAX. That was Doom. Yeah. Um, yep. A DSL before then. You know, early 2000s, man. Big Bell is going to roll DSL everywhere. To every Everywhere. Hill. Everywhere. <laughs> every podunk shack. Yeah, that didn't work out. Um, we had YMAX, uh, the cable companies. You know, and cable companies started pushing the internet big. And then when Doxus 3 came out and, you know, hell, my connection at the house went from 30 megs to 300. You know, and they're yep. like, oh, the West industry's doomed. And it is stronger than ever and competing with these cable companies in a lot of places. So we've Absolutely. we've been down this road and we've seen this. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of talk about the current uh, end of industry doom articles happening right now and get your take on it. See what you think. So <laughs> let's start with 5G. I know how much 5G you've had recently. How much fun. So. A, lot, a lot of love. I got a lot of love for 5G. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are the wrong fingers you threw up. So... <laughs> So, and it's, it's not really, you know, it's not Verizon, it's not AT&T or these smaller providers saying we're going to deliver rural 5G internet to the house and solve all the world's problems, right? It's, you know, the tech media, the tech media is absolutely awful. And then, you know, everyone's got to post all their stuff on LinkedIn and all these articles driving clicks. I mean, it's the bane of our existence right now is this click driven media presence that we live through. It is all marketing. It is all marketing fluff, all marketing fluff, man. But yeah, if you, you know, you ask somebody, I mean, it's always in the next two to five years, which is a rolling thing. Rule 5G, uh, ignoring all the cancer, mind control, uh, zombies and lizard people, you know, you're going to have gigabit, ultra wideband 5G to every house in Ant Hill uh, and every podunk street ever. So let's kind of break that down a little bit. You know, some of the claims and how things actually work in the real world. Yeah, so I mean, my, I mean, like my biggest thing with 5G is, you know, A, the speeds that they claim, right, are just not there. Now, let me preface that. Obviously, it is in very, 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 let me get smaller, small segments of the, you know, national footprint for 5G, right? So I live in the Austin area, right? So we're a tech-savvy town. You would think, you know, million people in the, the surrounding area. That That's pretty well populated. And, you know, I drive into Austin, and first, you know, never mind the speeds, the connectivity sucks, right? So it's like the latency is down or the network is just not robust enough where if I'm in 5G mode, most of the time I, you know, open up Facebook or whatever app I'm using and it just, it just sits there. Like there's, you know, I have five bars, right? I mean, everything should be great, but nothing loads. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And this happens everywhere. I mean, honestly, since I've had it, I've had T-Mobile now for how long, how long have I been bitching about this now? Like a month and a half, two months yeah, or something? Yeah, something like, that, like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for literally the, the last month and a half, maybe two months that I've had T-Mobile, the fastest 5G speeds that I've gotten was like 50 megs, right? And this is in Austin. This is in Round Rock. Oh, shit. I went up to Dallas, right? We were just in Dallas. I had, uh, when I first got it, same crap, right? So, you know, 50, 100 meg, maybe. And it's a whole nother story. Do you really need 100 meg to your phone anyway, right? But <laughs> I just don't see it. The stability is horrible horrible right so again the connections are not there i basically had to go into my phone and turn 5g off right so i basically run my phone in 4g lte mode and it is fantastic it is fantastic i get 30 megs consistently sometimes up to 50 megs depending on where i'm going the connection's always there the latency is you know fairly low uh and i really don't have any problems so 5g i mean i understand the fanboys that are out there, they're talking purely based on the, the the white paper technology itself. Sure, like you said, you're an ultra wideband, you know, you run these ultra high frequencies, really, you know, wide, you know, uh, wide channel widths. Yeah, you're going to get a gig. I've seen some posts, a gig, two gig. I'm like, it's you know, retarded anyway, but yeah, sure, it's possible, but it's not going to happen everywhere. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a freaking joke, man. 
Yeah, it's it's definitely overblown, and I can I can hear the quick clickbait warriors right now just twitching. But you know, <laughs> oh, I got two and a half gigs in the the airport. I'm like, that's yeah, cool because that's where they deploy it because that's like where people are going to check it out and see it and stuff like that. So. Exactly. It's again, it's it's marketing. That that was actually a great point you made there. It's right. They strategically put it in places to get people when they're not really thinking. They're just passing through. They see it. I mean, when they when the five G kicks in and it's working boom that's just marketing right there they just sold somebody right and somebody's gonna be like wow this is amazing you know but they'll never come on later when it doesn't work they just forget about it move on and their life goes on so so you see all this positive stuff and and you really don't see the negative stuff that's why i've taken it you know upon myself to go out (laughs) there and kind of push what i've been seeing as i travel and i travel a lot you know where i'm at put up that speed test and show how horrible it is. In most cases, the 4G LTE supersedes the speeds and reliability of the 5G connection. So 5G for me is... Nope. <laughs> the Tasa is official though. So <laughs> I mean, and a lot of it's now, I mean, they're deploying like mad. Anybody that's on any of these tower groups or knows anyone in the tower industry knows what the deployments are. And you know what? There's probably gonna be a lot of backfill and it's gonna work a lot better. I mean, the transition from three G to four G definitely took a bit, but you know, for most places, especially in the cities, it was relatively ubiquitous. So, you know, you're gonna see a, a lot more stable, but my whole point is like, okay, yeah, with enough money. Money and time, it's probably gonna work, and you'll have microcells on lamp poles and stuff in the city and ultra wideband kind of everywhere, you know, and that's fantastic. But that does not solve the issue of the rural broadband, you know, sort of dilemma because it's still in the end a physics problem and a money problem. So even though that funny money definitely exists everywhere right now, and we'll just kind of wavy hand that for the time being, but you know, it's a physics problem. I'm three, I don't know. I forget how far I am from my tower and I'm just on the outskirts of Charlotte. So I'm not that far away. And you know, they bumped up, you know, our speeds and stuff here. I can get a pretty decent connection, but I go 10, 20 miles down the road on some of these drives we go on and there's nothing and there's still plenty of people living there. So, you know, whether they, they boost up the capacities of the 4g, which I've seen here, you know, or they, they get quote unquote 5g there and sort of the marketing fluff, like in the end, you know, it's it's too far away. There's not enough spectrum, and like they're not going to want to load the capacity because those rural big cells. The same way we talk about, you know, using our sectors in these rural areas where your clients are yep. spread out. It makes yep. sense. Well, that's what they're doing. They're doing a very similar thing. They're not putting the same architecture in that they're putting in an ultra wideband thing in the heart of the Atlanta airport. So two completely different worlds, and you're just never going to have the capacity out there, uh, and they're not going to spend the money for the load. So. You know, in terms of doom for the Wisp industry, not going to happen. Now, is nope. it something they should consider and think about? Yeah, and we'll we'll sort of get to that at the very end. So, and and honestly, like, <clears throat> let's just look at it from this perspective too, which is something that recently happened to me. I mean, just because let's say five G does have some penetration into the rural areas, it's not the end of the world, right? I mean, I know many Wisps who are deploying. 4G LTE, who are buying, you know, a wholesale bandwidth from AT&T, whatever, and they're still making money on it, right? So you can also resell that service, right? So, I mean, just because it comes down in the area doesn't mean that you should just throw up your arms and forget about it. It's like, you know, see what you can do. I mean, you could resell that service as well and still make some money out of it and let AT&T worry about provisioning the network or whoever it is, uh, you know, you know, when, when the service goes down and they have to, you know, worry about building out all that capacity. So, so really it's about, you know, turning those lemons into lemonade. I always talk about that. You know, there's, mm-hmm. there's still a silver lining there. There's a way to work that into your business model if in your particular area, and it's going to happen, where it comes in and it actually starts to cause some problems for you potentially. You know, I said, make some lemonade out of it, man, because uh, there's, there's something to be done with it, you know, no matter what, no matter what. Exactly. Staying flexible and adaptable. And that's how you survive. That's, it's called business. So... All right, so that's 5G. Uh, let's now talk about Starlink. Kind of a kind of a hot topic, I'd say. <laughs> well, it, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's Starlink specifically or if it's Elon Musk. <laughs> you know, it's like a, this is like a double-edged sword. I mean, there's nobody particular, you know, that I want to punch. You know, in the 5G <laughs> side of things. But when it comes to Starlink, I'm like, you know, I'm 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 not a I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a huge fan of the man. And uh, so maybe that's that drives my other thing. But let's let's put that 
Let's put that aside. We're not going to be biased. Let's talk about the technology. Go ahead. I mean, yeah. where is that going? <laughs> so it's it's funny, though, because, you know, I'm doing I'm like, I should catch up on some data points. Like I keep aware, but I don't track it. Um, there's some folks that straight up live for this stuff, whether it be the pure fanboys or the anti fanboys. I don't haters, I guess, whatever the kids are calling it nowadays. Trolls, but stuff like trolls that. yeah. I don't know. Either side is equally annoying in my book, and it's very difficult to find relatively unbiased information. There's just so much spin, spin, spin on everything. But there is, there so is. I was looking at this, and I figured let's talk quick about the tech, and then we'll talk about the economic side, uh, maybe quick impacts, uh, and then just hype beast in general. So uh, easiest to look at is the tech. So. You know, there's not a lot of public information out there, but there are some things that we know. Right now, there's about 1,600 some odd satellites in the constellation. They've got clearance for 4,000 satellites. To get their worldwide coverage, I think the they're saying is something they need like 42,000 satellites to get it's worldwide ridiculous, coverage. Ridiculous, ridiculous amounts, yes. So, from a technical perspective, let's just wavy hand the trillion dollars is going to cost. Uh, let's just say they get it up and going, okay? And even though, like, now they can't launch because they're moving to laser backhaul instead of focusing so much on ground control, but they can't get it done because of the chipset shortage, da 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 the same old story. But let's just say we get the birds and let's say we get a full constellation running in the States, right? We'll just focus on our area. You know... The last set of numbers I looked at was showing that with the current phased array setup that they're using, you're going to have about four gigs of capacity in a five mile radius or something like that, which sounds like a lot until you look in a high density area, how many houses that could cover, even a medium density area, you know, mm -hmm. and now yeah. with, you know, that, that, that butter gets spread a little thin there. So, you know, this, it's not like they're going to drop a gig again to every house in the whole world. Like it doesn't physically scale like that. Yeah. There'll be tech advances and everything, but it ain't going to work. So, and this is why, I mean, and they say that too, they're not focusing on the density. They're not focusing on the cities. They're, they're focusing mainly on rural, but even in a relatively rural area, I mean, there's a lot of folks that you can squint in, in that radius. Now, my, my numbers may be off a factor here and there. It's been a little bit, but I mean, especially if everyone thinks, oh, you know, I went to Reddit and look at the, the Starlink sub and, you know, all these people are getting 250 megs. And I'm like, yeah, because they're the first one on that, that area. Yeah, they're, but they're the only one on that area, maybe <laughs> in some cases, you know. I mean, a lot of it, you look at the Ookla tests and stuff. I mean, and it's not terrible. I mean, you know, they're averaging 40, 50 megs or whatever it may be, which yeah. is certainly not terrible. But, I mean, this not is still all. early beta where they're not letting anybody. I think they got 90,000 some odd people on now. They have 500,000 backlogged uh, waiting to get birds in the air. But, you know, it's it's not the doom and gloom from a pure tech perspective. A lot of people think that it is. You got to look no. at the math. You got to look at the coverage and the capacity because, you know, it didn't 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 multiply out. Yeah, and, and and even those capacity numbers, I'm sure it's like everything, and and it probably, uh, you know, goes with like what we see here, right? You know, we we see a lot of the kind of you know on paper you know, white paper, purely technical, in a vacuum, although they are in a vacuum in space, right? But Yeah, you, yeah but they're only 550 kilometers <laughs> up, but there's still parts of the trouble for you. Like, but, this is but, the shit you run into in these, these yeah, when you're researching but, not, but the numbers that you're seeing is, is you know, again, the theoretical, optimal, everything is perfect number. So, yeah, it may have four gigs, let's say, of bandwidth available per bird, right? But, I mean, it's not always going to work that way. It's not always going to work that way. And I would imagine that there's there's a lot of the, uh, you know, besides the new technical issues that they have to overcome, weather and, and whatever might be there as well, you probably still have some of the other problems we deal with as well, where you have some customers who maybe don't have a great connection and it throws off, you know, speeds and, you know, the different transponders and different parts of the arrays and, it, 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 you know, one bad customer starts affecting the performance of the other customers. And, and let's talk about a blackout, right? So if that bird goes down, what happens, right? If it stops working, then you have a five mile area that has no service. When another one comes in, it picks up and that bad one goes somewhere else. I mean, there's just, there's just so much that can happen in space um, that it's just, uh, it's just, I, I just don't see. I mean, at least as a wisp, they can pick up the phone, 
they can call you and you can roll out to their house and get them a new CPE and you can get them, you know, up and running again. If you're, you know, an AP goes down on your tower, you can roll out to that tower. You can get that AP back up and running, right? And you don't really get that uh, when you're in space. You don't have the truck rolls to space to fix that <laughs> stuff, right? So, I mean, service. I think service is really, you know, where WISPs come in and how we're going to dominate dominate Starlink because there's no way they can perform or provide the service, the customer service that uh, we as WISPs can do. Uh, and they'll have, uh, you know, no, no way of doing that, you know, no, no, no way of, you know, keeping up with that. And uh, customers appreciate that. I mean, I know, I know I do. I've had service with some providers and uh, the service wasn't always great. But, you know, the fact that I knew that when I picked up the phone, they called, they knew who I was, right? Um, when they said, hey, I'm sorry, I knew they meant it, right? That's a big thing. <laughs> and I'm willing yeah. to deal with it. And, and, and when I said, look, dude, you really need to bail me out. I have some mission critical, whatever, conference, something going on. I need this to happen. You know, they're able to put me at the head of the list and get me taken care of before some other people when that happens. So you're not going to get that with Starlink. So, pfft. No, not at all. I mean, the, yeah. in the service side of thing, I mean, this is how WISPs are competing in dense suburban and even urban areas against the big cable companies. You know, it's that 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 local business, that service, the fact that you can actually talk to a human and stuff. I mean, carries so much weight. So, that I mean, that's huge. Now, I mean, there's also so many other issues at play. So you have to have what 120 degree clear view of the southern sky or whatever. Like you're yeah. like, okay, I just have to see the sky. Well, in these rural areas, <laughs> at least in my part of the country, we got these things called trees, trees, <laughs> and they get really high and like. I mean, and definitely an issue that West face too, but now you have to have it not just in one direction. You don't have to have a clear shot to a tower. You have to have a clear shot across, you know, pretty much the whole sky. So you've yeah. got those considerations. You've got Dishy McFlat face. So the CPE <laughs> in and of itself is pretty freaking sweet. Like, I'm not going to argue that it one. It is yet. auto aligning. I mean, the, the tech, the tech is there. I mean, it's cool shit. No it's doubt. It's cool. No doubt. But... It's five hundred dollars that you have to pay. You own it uh, and you install it. So, what happens when your dog eats the cable that? Oh, it's permanently hardwired in, or somebody, you know, you put it out in your yard because you can't get service anywhere close to the house. So you drag this thing out in the yard, and your right. kid runs over with the lawnmower. Lightning hits it, floods. It overheats because apparently that's been an issue. Like that's a thing. That's a and, thing. And then, like, what do you do? You get this five hundred dollar door weight. Now, this five hundred dollar door weight also costs, you know, space or uh, Starlink probably two to three grand of actual cost. And we've been seeing yeah. a lot about that lately. And that, that how's it work more when you have a? Well, how's it work when you have a foot of snow and ice on your roof, and that thing is just encrusted in it? You know, I'm just like, Ugh. yeah, problems. I think it, it's got a heater and it auto tracks. I mean, there's some pretty cool stuff. So. I think the heat, the heat has been what I think has been the main main physical issue. Line of sight, funny enough, uh, and heat have been the big thing. So, I mean, and again, it's not like you lease it or anything. You buy it, and it's yours. And what happens when it dies? Like, you know, there's, there's just, it's definitely a big factor to consider. So, are, are you familiar? Are you familiar with the the connection interface? I mean, I know that it's like hardwired in. I mean, is it, is it like an ethernet cat five run? Is it yeah. like a proprietary yeah. USB or something like this? I mean, what's, no, what's the interface like? Pretty sure it's cat five runs in the house, ties into the router. It's uh, a POE kind of thing too. So to yeah, speak. exactly. So, I mean, it's a pretty slick setup and like the interface and stuff is simple. You can track and see, like, I don't know. <laughs> you can track and see how much downtime you're having. I'm like, well, that's cool. If you're tinkering, terrifying <laughs> if you're not right. Like, you know, that interface is going to go away here pretty soon. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of complaints. Well, it's beta. I'm like, okay, well, this thing could be in beta for the next 10, 20 years. We don't really know. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got that. The tech, the tech issues are kind of what I think about because I mean, money, I mean, money's kind of fake, especially when we're just kind of, uh, making it rain, you know, from the federal level, throw money out there. Yeah. Uh, they recently picked up a bill from an easy billion from art off and everything. But I mean, at some point the money doesn't last forever and yeah, they got Starlink or uh space X, 
you know, this is supposed to be paying for SpaceX because SpaceX can't sustain itself with just doing NASA yep. DOD launches. And then you end up with this weird, like, snake eating its tail way of paying for things. And you look at to put up 42,000 satellites, what's that cost? When you can only pop up 60 at a time, right? A lot. they don't have the heavy pushing them yet. You know, they're, they're running the Falcon 9, which is a great rig, but, I mean, it's not, you know, $60 million to pop that joker up there and carry 60 satellites. They're like, well, this is a carry the one. Oh, yeah, that's a million dollars a piece to get them up in the air. Uh, yeah. They got a five-year lifespan, so you got to pay to basically rebuild the whole thing every five years, give or take. You've got normal attrition of 3% a year. You got, you know, all the space junk and all this other stuff. Like there's just a lot of factors to play. Now, in my personal opinion, I think the military is probably sort of darkly feeding this. Um, and, they're, they're, and it's my, my belief that the military is going to take it over. He's not building this for <laughs> U.S. citizens broadband. This is going to turn into a military uh, military apparatus, and that's what it's going to be used for. That's just my putting it out there early on. We'll see if I'm right in five, six years from now, but... I've seen a few pictures of the dishes at like like DoD installs and, or installations and stuff like that, and people just lose their mind. And I'm like, well, maybe, or maybe it's just some guy that wants some internet out in Podunk, Alaska, on this lonely Air Force base or something, <laughs> wants to play. So that one guy, was, yeah, yeah, that one guy, yeah. Uh, <laughs> example but, man. And, so yeah, but and 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 beyond like the the actual physical cost, because like you said, money's being printed these days. So I, I don't. I don't find it very difficult to believe that he will find and get the money, whether it's from the government, governments around the world, whatever it is. I think that will happen, right? But if you look at the cost, like you mentioned earlier, right? So the device costs 500 bucks itself. So you know you're a rural customer, you got to pay that. And what's the monthly, uh, the, the the monthly subscription fee, right? What's it cost every month to have the internet? It's like 100 and something bucks a month, right? It's so like I 99, think, 99 bucks, which is yeah. I mean, still, I mean, there's the Wisps can highly compete on price as well as on service. I mean. I mean, I don't know. There's only so much opinion and feedback that I can give because I'm not a wisp, right? You know, so we're not doing it every day. Obviously, we're not out there feeling the grind. But I mean, for what I do know, I, I think I at least I can give a really good perspective because I know what it's like to be a customer for internet, right? And I've mm -hmm. been in rural at my ranch, right? I have it in the suburbs at my house. So from that perspective. I know what I'm willing to pay and what I'm willing to deal with. And uh, like I said, the the only way that I would get Starlink, you know, out in, let's say, my ranch, right, where it's rural, is if I had no other choice, right? So um, I, I just, I'm just not seeing it, man. I don't know. I don't know about the doom. I think I think we as an industry really need to focus on what the hell we're doing. We've done so good over the last 10, 15 years. Just keep pushing forward. Keep building out. Go to those areas before they go to those areas. And, and I think you're going to be just fine. I think you're going to be just fine. Yeah, I think it's it's not going to crash and burn like every, you know a lot of the no. haters think. I think it's going to be around. I think it's going to be a thing. I think it'll always be the meh kind of choice or the okay well, choice. I mean, Hughesnet is still ditch. out there, right? Right? I mean, yeah. so... They, they do it with three satellites, so not 42,000. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I think it will be an option. But, yeah, if you're running a WISP and can service these areas and you've got a good, solid business, you know, it's definitely something you want to watch and keep keep your eyes on. But it's not doom. It's more like, I don't know, lowercase doom with a question doom. mark. Doom. <laughs> doom. <laughs> no, no, it's like doom. Or like, I don't know. <laughs> the little shrug emoticon like, doom? Let's see. <laughs> so lowercase yeah. doom. Yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about it. I, I'm not. I'm not worried for the wisps that are out there, um, based on all all the things that I know. And uh, and we'll see. Like I said, you know, don't forget our industry is evolving too, right? So speeds are getting faster, radios are getting better, spectrum is opening up. I mean, there's there's really you're much better off with the half glass, uh, the glass half full than half empty. So just pay attention to what's happening, the good things that are happening uh, in our industry, and just 
push ahead, man. Push ahead. Because we, we've been there. We've been there twice, three times now, in at least my experience. So uh, you're good to go. You're good to go. No, no need no need to get a taco truck. That's for yeah. sure. <laughs> it's more of a more of a, a doom with a yawn. So my, my yeah, last point exactly. on that is, you know, it's really funny. You look at the biggest doomers about Starlink and the biggest, you know, oh, it's going to destroy everything. I'm like, okay, let me look at your post, Mr. Wisp Talk, dude. Let me see what kind of wisp you're running. Uh, oh, there's, oh, you don't. Oh, okay, oh, cool. Yeah, cool story, yeah. bro. So, you know, <laughs> gone. So, all right. So now getting back to Earth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's pretty good. It's not, not even like to Earth, but like we're going below Earth in some places right here, right? Right. We're going underground. <laughs> underground. Time for a little underground talk from the Unlocked Podcast. Well, it's Friday afternoon. Can you tell? So we should start shooting these on like a Thursday so we can actually get through them. So. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. All right. So fiber into the world or one of the best things that you can also do. Yeah. I mean, definitely one of the best things that you could also do. Right. So definitely fiber is not the end. Um, again, uh, there's, there's a lot of land out there, a lot of customers out there and it's becoming, you know, cheaper and easier to do it, uh, as time goes on. So for me, fiber gets a ching ching, two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of the biggest concerns, I mean, and I get it too, you know, you're, uh, even a big operator is not remotely funded, you know, like some of these big national companies are. And, you know, some of these big national companies, even the really terrible ones, like how does a bank, like a company is listed on a grant winning with their bankruptcy name. Like, how do you even do that? Right. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Good grant writers, I guess. Right. Exactly. Like. They're grant winners, DBA, like bankruptcy holding corp or whatever. But anyways, <laughs> so there's a bunch of these big crappy companies getting a lot of my, uh, money for fiber. And, you know, a lot of folks are afraid they're just going to overbuild everything. And, you know, whether or not that's true is super dependent on your location. You know, if you're a WISP and you're in a dense area and you know that there's a high quality provider coming in or even a big fiber wisp or uh just a regular fiber isp coming in and they're about to lay a bunch of stuff down you know what maybe it's not the best place to deploy right now but if you're worried about some of these sketchy operators i'm not gonna throw a lot of names out there but you know the ones that are failed a lot but still keep getting prop up you know if they're talking about maybe coming out there somewhere hey that's fair game like get after it whether you're doing wireless or even your own fiber especially if you're doing your own fiber you know so because not only can you get it done in a reasonable amount of time because you know exactly how long it's going to take but then you've got all the benefits of that local support um local relationships. We talked about this on an earlier episode, you know, forming the relationships with your local government, whether it be the city level, the muni level, the county, the state, you know, even federal, if you can like, you know, build those relationships because those pop up and they want to put that name out there before the, the big evil corp and stuff too. Definitely. Definitely. And you know, a lot of that fiber that's going out there isn't, you know, to the home. I mean, fiber is, is kind of a generic term, right, as far as what they're trying to do. A lot of it is maybe going down some of those, you know, county roads or farm to market roads in some of the rural areas, but it's not really necessary to, to bring it to those homes that are there, right? So these are great opportunities for a WISP to be able to wholesale buy fiber, right, and beam it to their towers and get more bandwidth there, right? So, you know, there's, there's, there's other opportunities and other things that you can do where you know this might actually benefit you more than and then it'll actually hurt you so it's things to look at as well for sure i think one of them, and i can't remember if we talked about this the other week or not uh because i'm getting old uh <laughs> and getting kind of that friday feeling but um you know there's a lot of these like electrical co-ops and stuff that are running a ton of aerial because for them it doesn't exactly. really cost you know yep. hardly anything other than the material but a lot of those are running a bunch of dark fibers and they want to partner for that last mile um yep and lease yep. out stuff and use them for transport. Um, even a lot of the big carriers, big tower companies are bringing a lot of their own fiber into sites too. And then you can either tie in or, you know, do your wireless. The, the hybrid model looks really good. So, you know, fiber in existence, if you have the opportunity to deploy it, 
you should really be looking down that path. And there's a lot of places to learn. Um, we mentioned Wispa, the uh, Vegas show, Wispa Palooza. You know, there's a ton of fiber talk at that show. So go check there's, that there's, out. There's a Fispa show specifically for fiber ISPs as well. Actually, it's now in September. It just got think canceled, got canceled because of COVID. Yeah, yeah but still, there's a, a Fispa show and, and group um, that you can look into as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we brought this up a few times lately, but it's, it's not the doom uh, it's that a lot of people spell it out to be. But you got to take it contextually and look and say, you know, sometimes you got to zig, sometimes you got to zag. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think like, you know, I said earlier about the 5G thing. It's like, look, guys, you know, let's let's make some lemonade right uh, out of these lemons. There's a lot of benefit for you uh, out of that. And it doesn't have to be the, the end of the world, you know. Yeah, I mean, as a WISP, like any other company or business out there, like you've got to evolve. So if you're just kind of leaning, you know, up against a fence post and not upgrading and not bringing in capacity and running these sort of five meg rule janky connections and stuff like that, then you know what? There's a really good chance that a Starlink or, you know, even a rural 5G link or something could really wipe you out from a competition perspective. So you can't rest on your laurels. You got to get up there and get moving. But there's so much out there now for the WIS provider to, to utilize from a tech perspective between the radio stuff, our stuff, you know, enable to build these massively scalable networks that you couldn't do years ago. Um, the fiber transport's never been cheaper. The radios, like I said, you know, now we're talking next gen, whether AX and Medusas and things like that. Like you can get a high number of high bandwidth plans on there and be super competitive, you know, against the big guys. So you got to stay mo in motion. You got to stay positive. Uh, you got to stay focused, but, and offer that service and you're going to be fine. Definitely. hundred percent. Totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. And there's way, like, there's so many other things that are terrible that you got to deal with, too, like taxes and lightning and everything else. So you got plenty of other things to worry about. So. Yeah, and, and those are more real and things that uh, you you really should focus about uh, dealing with. I think, I think if you really, you know, think back about all that stuff, it's really, think about what you have going on and what you can do to make your service better, uh, to make your customer service better. If you really focus on yourself and your company, uh, you're, you're going to be fine. Don't don't waste time thinking about what the other people are doing. Just focus on what you got going on. Focus on making that better, growing your WISP, you know, growing your company, and providing a, a better service than any of these big box uh, providers can ever, ever do, ever do. 100%, man. So look at us being all positive and vibing. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was, you know, I was, I was all like, you know, all... I got y'all worked up over 5G, but you then you sort of just mellow it out. Now, now I'm just kind of like, love is in the air. <laughs> 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 Let's make some lemonade, you know? So, yeah, I mean, really, it, it gets me pumped up, right? And uh, um, it's something that I'm, I'm really passionate about. Like I always say, this industry, um, I definitely don't want to see it fall apart. And uh, I'm, I'm willing to fight and help whoever I have to help in order to, to keep it going. So, for me, uh, you know, I, I think we got things going on. Uh, we're good. We're good. Yeah, it's super exciting what's coming up. So, well, all right. Well, speaking of what's coming up, what you got? We wrap this up here. What you got going on this weekend, man? What's, what's, what's yeah, so, so yeah. So I'm actually going to Houston. Not my favorite city uh, in Texas, <laughs> but I'm go, go, going out to Houston, especially well. You know, there's a hurricane coming into the Gulf, right? So my luck, you know, maybe maybe this will be good because the, the people in Louisiana where it's supposed to go would be happy if it went to Galveston, you know, and, and the area I'm going. But uh, my daughter has a uh, soccer tournament. As you can see, I'm wearing my soccer shirt here representing Austin. But uh, obviously, it's not her league or anything like that. But I'm kind of <laughs> in a soccer dad mood, you know. So, yeah. So driving up to Houston for the weekend. She's got a couple games on Saturday, a game on Sunday. And we'll be back. So uh, I'm excited. Lots of Lots of good food in Houston, though. Lots of good food. So I'm excited about, you know, going out to eat, uh, checking out some uh, some new spots that are probably out there. And uh, like I said, eating some good food at least. So that's, I'm pretty excited. 
<laughs> All I can think of is hmm, Houston in August, September. No, yeah, no. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I was doing work. I, I was. I had to do a lot of work out that way on the last couple of years, and I'm like, I am going to die. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was talking to my buddy the other day. I was like, he's like, what are you doing this weekend? There's a birthday party, and uh, I'm like, I'm going to Houston. He's like, oof. He's like, All right, so you, you, you're going to bring like you know a, a gallon of talcum powder and uh, about you know about five towels with you because you're going to be sweating like everywhere. I'm like, yeah, I know. When you go to Houston, you're sweat sweats. You know, so, you know, I'm a big boy. I don't like sweating, but, uh, you know, I'm going to take one for the team. I'll take one for the team. Love my daughter. I uh, love her playing soccer. So I got to just, I got dad things, man. I got to do it. You got to do dad things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I've gotten, if it starts raining, watch out. I've been stuck in that airport because it had the audacity to rain. Cause I mean, why would it ever rain on the, the Gulf coast? Right. Dude, it was a nightmare. That place floods that you spill a Coke and that place is going to flood. So yeah, it starts yeah. raining. You need to get out of there. But uh, yeah, I know. I know. I'm familiar enough with it. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're having our fingers crossed, fingers crossed. <laughs> Well, cool, cool, man. Yeah, not a lot going on around here. Uh, going to do a little uh, grilling, kitchen tinkering this weekend. Uh, just trying to stay chilling around here. Luckily, I think we've about got summertime heat. We're close. we got a few more weeks, and then maybe it'll cool off. We'll have a little bit of fake fall. I get very excited around fake fall season. We get that week where it's like crisp and cool, then it hits like, like swamp season again for a few weeks, and then drops down. So... But it's coming soon, so I gotta start prepping. I gotta start digging up some firewood and and, and tapping some old sources and stuff. So I'm working mm-hmm. on some some fall preparation, you could say. Nice, nice, nice. All right, man. Well, this has been fun. Uh, but that said, it is Friday. It is time to go. So let's wrap this up. Now, anybody out there, we want to hear from you. Give us some input uh, about what you guys want to hear about. There's a lot of ways you can find us. Tassos and I are all over Facebook and social media platforms. I'm sure you've seen. Uh, Tasso is more than me because uh, I let him do his thing. I kind of hide in the shadows where I can. But uh, we've got the RF Elements Facebook group. We have RMF. Uh, uh, RF Elements English, RF Elements Espanol, Asia, now Africa is about to turn up. So we got a lot of RF Elements pages. You can find us on our websites. Uh, you can find us on our personal profile, our YouTube channel, a ton of good information there. Uh, check out the link calculator and the stock locator. Ding a ling. I mean, we need a little bell. Every time I say link calculator, I need to ring a little bell. We need <laughs> oh, we, that. We should so. take a shot. Every time, every time he says link calculator, everybody out there take a shot. <laughs> Oh God, we'd be dead. So <laughs> They'd but, be dead. yeah, there are plenty of ways to find us. Um, again, we'll, we'll post this up when these new episodes post and you want to, Hey guys, you know, let us know what you want to talk about. Uh, we're looking for guests here in the very near future. Like to, you know, have some conversations with you guys and we're super excited yeah. about that. So, and don't forget to like, listen, or subscribe to our channels to make sure you get the latest updates as well. So I guess until next time, everybody stay horny. Stay horny, y'all.